Good morning and welcome to Sportatino. I'm Richard Park. You are watching live on Facebook and on YouTube. It is Thursday, December the 1st. Come on, who of you have already opened your advent calendars? Who's already dipped into the chocolate this morning? Come on, be honest, it's only 25 days till Christmas, 18 days until my birthday. If any of you want to get some gifts, yes, it's the same birthday as Brad Pitt. I know what you're thinking there. But we are here digesting sports at breakfast like we do every single weekday morning from 8 GMT. Live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Also listen back to us on iTunes and join the conversation at Sportachino. Today we're talking wrestling. We're talking WWE tables, ladders and chairs. A huge event coming up this Sunday. All of that to come on today's show. But let's begin the day with our morning sports headlines. Gareth Southgate is appointed the new manager of the England national team on a four-year contract. Southampton knocked Arsenal out of the EFL Cup at the Emirates with a 2-0 win in the quarterfinals. Manchester United are also through with a 4-1 win against West Ham. It's been announced that bonus points will be used in next year's Rugby Six Nations. And David Hay throws a punch at Tony Bellew at their free fight press conference. So that is the morning sports headline. So Arsenal knocked out of the EFL Cup by Southampton. Southampton will now play at Liverpool in the next round. Hull will face Manchester United across the two legs in January. United and Liverpool kept apart. Could they meet in the final? What a final that would be if they both reach there. We'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, every single morning on our Twitter page, we have a brand new poll. Let's see what's on it today. And today we're talking about the rugby. You heard me mention it in the headlines there. We want to know if you think it's a good decision to introduce bonus points in rugby's Six Nations. It's going to start from 2017. The idea is it to encourage more free-flowing, attacking rugby. Four points there for a win. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Is it about time they did this? Or do you prefer the way it's been? Are you a traditionalist? Do you think it should stay the same? Let us know on the Twitter page. Get involved. Is it a good decision to introduce bonus points in the 2017 Six Nations? We'd love to get your thoughts. Also give us your thoughts on the Facebook page about that. All right, let's have a look at the result of yesterday's poll. And we were talking cricket after England's lost the third test against India. They're now 2-0 down in the series. And we want to know, can England win one of those last two tests? Could they haul it back? Could they even get a draw from this series? It's not looking good right now, but we've seen even more surprising things happen in sport. So that was the result, and it's a 50-50 split in this poll. 50 of you think they can win a test, 50% of you think they can't. Thanks for getting involved in that. We would love to get your views. If you missed out on that poll, get involved on the Facebook page, get involved on YouTube, get involved on Twitter. Now, before every WWE pay-per-view and after every pay-per-view, we like to preview the show, then we like to review the show, because I'm a huge wrestling fan, and I know many of you are around the world. So today, we're going to preview the next installment, the SmackDown-only pay-per-view, WWE tables, ladders, and chairs. And I'm delighted to introduce to the show this morning the wrestling expert, Gareth Messenger. He joins me live from Doha, second time in a week that we've gone live to Doha. And Gareth, good morning to you. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, really good, Richard. How are you? I'm doing very well. I've, I've got my coffee out of my Sportachino mug, so I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm good to dissect this SmackDown-only card. We've had a few of them already. What have you made of the SmackDown only pay-per-view so far? Um, I've been quite impressed by SmackDown, to be honest with you. I think they've been more creative than Raw. Um, Raw, for me, is always going to be the flagship show, as everybody knows, for WWE. But with SmackDown, I think since they've, they've introduced the likes of Shane McMahon and, and Daniel Bryan, and it's been really really inventive, really creative, and I think it's given WWE a new lease of life. There was a little danger that WWE was losing a lot of viewers before the, they, they, the, the brand split, 
So it's quite interesting now to see that they've had the split and that there's been more sort of a creative influence on this, particularly on SmackDown as there is opposed to Raw. So it's been quite nice to watch. Um, and there's a, a host of superstars there as well who are, who are really um, garnering the attention. I mean, you look at someone like James Ellsworth. You know, he's just... It, the man is so he's so on form at the minute, and this is a guy who really stereotypically shouldn't be so popular as he is. But he, he's just uh, getting so much uh, crowd backing behind him. It's brilliant. It feels a little bit like a Eugene popularity, though, to me. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, it, it, there's no way it's going to last long term. I think for a short term fix uh, to be implemented in the in the storyline like he has done has been. It's been quite amusing to watch. I mean, there is always a danger that he does become quite, um, you know, quite sterile, um, which is always the case. But I think they used him in the right way at Survivor Series, where they used him as the, the SmackDown mascot, and he eliminated Braun Strowman, which was quite fun to watch. But um, I think it's now time for him to sort of leave this Ambrose AJ Styles um, feud because. It's sort of starting to tarnish that feud a little bit. And I don't really see his place in it anymore. At first it worked. I'm not so sure now. Well, he took that major bump at Survivor Series, which was pretty epic when he was thrown off the stage through the table from Braun Strowman. Yeah. Are we expecting him to get involved in this main event between AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose? And also, who do you think is going to leave with the title? I think... It would make sense now because of what happened on SmackDown on Tuesday where um, AJ um, gave Ellsworth the Styles Clash on the steel steps. Um, but it would make sense for Ellsworth to be involved. I just wonder how they would involve him because I, I honestly think that AJ will leave the champion. It would make more uh, editorial sense for him to leave it, leave the, leave the pay-per-view as the champion because... The, the AJ Dean Ambrose feud has been going on since sort of uh, around about the brand split, really. So that's, that's a long, little long time now. So I think it would make more sense if AJ left as the champion and then someone like The Undertaker comes in and challenges him and then that sets up a match at the Royal Rumble between Taker and AJ, which would make more sense. But um, so I'm, I'm back in AJ, but I think Ellsworth will be involved in some capacity, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of talk about that Undertaker-AJ Styles match at the Royal Rumble. The thing is, with the Undertaker, it's not like he needs to go for the title. So I think they could make that work, whether Styles has the belt or not. Um, we'll have to wait and see this Sunday, WWE TLC. Now, when you mentioned in your, in your first answer about Daniel Bryan, of course, The Miz keeps antagonizing Daniel Bryan. There was also that brilliant segment a few weeks ago on Talking Smack, which looked a little bit too real for my liking. Do you expect Daniel Bryan to come back anytime soon? Is this leading somewhere? Could this lead to potentially the Miz, Daniel Bryan at a WrestleMania perhaps? Or are they just kind of winding the fans up here of a potential return? I think... Um... I think a lot of fans would like to see Daniel Bryan return, um, and and if they were going to do it against anybody, it would have to be against a safe worker like the Miz. I mean, we've got to remember that the Miz, he's not really a flamboyant wrestler like your your Neville's or or even your Sami Zayn's or somebody like that. But um, you know, Miz is quite a safe worker. So if that if there was any chance of Daniel Bryan returning, it would have to be against somebody like the Miz to make it safe because. Let's face it, the man has retired because of various concussions. Yeah, it's a very serious injury. He's retired for his own health. So it wouldn't it, it would be have to be, you know, a, a match where there was no risk. So I personally don't think that that's gonna transpire in any way. But um the the Miz is on, on such good form right now, I mean he could sort of do no wrong. I think the introduction of uh, his wife Maurice into his storyline has really expanded him as a as a wrestler and as a performer, so because I think, again, he was another one who was becoming quite um, mundane, if you like. He was becoming quite mon mundane with his storylines, but introduced Maurice, his wife, and he, it's just added a whole new lease of life onto his character, which is fantastic to watch. And he's an excellent heel as well, and he's a brilliant wrestler. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really like the match between Miz and Sami Zayn, but, you know, that, that finish with Maurice was quite clever, I thought. <laughs> So let's talk about The Miz. The Miz is facing Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental title in a ladder match. Ziggler's pretty good at those ladder matches. Where do you think that's going to go? Yeah, he is quite good, actually. You're, you're right there, um, Richard. He's, he's good at ladder matches. But 
I just think it's going Miz's way, to be honest with you. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense for Ziggler to win the title again and then the feud to continue because I think this feud is, is just sort of, it's on its last legs now, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's been sort of dragging on and dragging on and dragging on and I think Miz needs another challenge and it wouldn't surprise me if we had someone like um, someone like Corbin to challenge him after who, you know, Corbin's due a title shot of some sorts and I think he's a little bit lost in his own feud against Kalisto at the minute. It doesn't really make any sense. So I'm going to go with Miz uh, to beat Ziggler on this one. Do you rate Corbin? Oh, yeah, I do. I think Corbin's excellent. He's so big, he's so strong, uh, natural athlete. I, I think he's a little bit wasted, to be honest, at the minute. They're not using him in the right way. Um, but it wouldn't be the first time that WWE was accused of not using a, a, a superstar in the right way. I mean, you have, just have to look at someone like Cesaro, for example. I mean, Cesaro at the minute is currently challenging for the for the tag team titles over on Raw, and let's face it, he should be, you know, main title pitcher contender. Um, so I really like Corbin. I think he's going to be a big star. Yeah, you say lack of flamboyance. I, I normally think of Baron Corbin when I think of that. I'm, I'm not a fan, really. Let's move on to the women. <laughs> Two women's yes. matches right now. No disqualification match between Nikki Bella and Carmella. This feud's been going on for a little while now. Is this going to be the culmination of it, and what do you think is ultimately going to happen? I think it might be. I think it. Um, I think Carmella. <clears throat> it's hard to tell who will win, really, um, because this feud was. It was one that was really sort of frustrating me a little bit. I didn't really understand where they were going with it, but then it changed a couple of weeks ago when Carmella came out and cut a promo, which included um, having a little dig at John Cena, who's obviously Nikki Bella's boyfriend. Um, so it was really interesting to see. The, the use of Cena in that promo and how Nikki has responded to it. It's quite interesting, actually, and it's it's quite refreshing to see the WWE creative allow Carmella that time to, to have a go at Cena. And obviously Cena won't have a problem with it because it's not going to affect his image as such. But obviously Nikki, uh, Nikki would take offence to it. But it's also a clever way to promote Total Bellas, uh, uh, you know, the, the new programme which involves Nikki and John Cena and Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. So I think it's a very clever way to to use it to promote Total Bellas, to promote Total Divas, but also make giving the, the WWE Universe a reminder that Cena is still out there, he's just doing bits, and it also um, enhances that feud a little bit. But I think I think Nikki might win this one. I just think Carmella's had the upper hand too often in the past few weeks. It just makes, I think it makes sense for Nikki to win this, and maybe they have a, you know, a final match at Royal Rumble or something along those lines, and then it goes, they, go, they part their ways and go somewhere else. I think you're right. I think Nikki could win this. And like you said, there's one thing WWE is consistently good at, and that is cross-promotion. They're excellent at doing that. The other women's yeah. match is for the Women's Championship in a tables match, Alexa Bliss against Becky Lynch. Have you been enjoying this feud? You know what I have, actually. I have, Richard. It's Again, it was another one I was really struggling to emotionally invest in. But I th now... Now I think it's reached its point. I think Alexa Bliss has got better and better each week. Like her, the way she's cutting her promos, the way she's wrestling, um, the, the way she's conducting herself in and outside the ring. I just think it's been really, really impressive. And I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if she walked out the champion. The only thing that makes me doubt that she will win was the fact that she, she put Becky through the table, Becky Lynch through the table on Tuesday night. And I just think that that might be a sign that Becky's actually going to walk out the champion. Um, because I don't know, it's, it's a really weird one. I think I'd be happy with whoever wins that, to be honest. I think they've both been excellent, they've both been brilliant performers. Um, it's a really interesting feud, sort of similar. Uh, I think I think SmackDown was really missing a women's um, a women's match, uh, a women's feud. Sorry, like Raw has with uh, Sasha Banks and Charlotte. Um, that was that's really that's a, that's an incredible feud, and I think SmackDown's really missing that. And I think Becky and Alexa could could really. Um, Bring that to the forefront for SmackDown. It's, it's been a really good watch. I think hard to tell. I think I might I might just uh, sway with Becky. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think I can see Becky kind of winning that. I think initially the whole plan was Alexa was kind of just a bit of fodder for Becky Lynch, but I think she's been so impressive that they've kept this feud going. And you yeah. know, I, I wonder if while Becky will win, uh, the the people behind in, in the backstages are kind of thinking, you know what, Alexa's actually got potential here. This could be something down the line. We'll have to wait and see. All right, there is one more match which is currently advertised, and that is for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Heath Slater and Rhino, yes, 
they are the defending champions, against Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. What have you made of this new uh, Wyatt family? Uh, I'm really intrigued by it. I think I, I know that there are some plans moving forward. Nobody really knows what the plans are yet. Um, I mean, in regards to this match, let's just get that out the out the way straight away. I think I think Wyatt and Orton have to win. If they don't win, it just makes the whole uh, the partnership of them two and the Wyatt family. It just makes them a laughing stock if ever to lose against someone like Rhino and Heath Slater, who have been you know short term entertainment. Don't get me wrong. But I think now their time has passed as champions, and it needs something a little bit more, um, a little bit more concrete now. So I have a bit more of a storyline, and I think Wyatt and Orton definitely give us that. Um, so I think it makes sense if they have to win it. Really intrigued to see where the feuds go. It's obviously setting up a, a feud between Orton and Wyatt himself. But I think again, Wyatt, another character underused, not used in the correct way by WWE. I think it's now time he gets that title push. You know, Orton doesn't need the title push. Orton's had you know, 12 reigns as champion. But Wyatt is thoroughly deserving of a title push. And I just wonder if this is a stepping stone. And I think maybe Orton may be helping him to get to that point. So we'll see. But it's definitely Orton and Wyatt uh, winning on Sunday for me. You don't think they, they were teasing quite a lot about Luke Harper in interference on SmackDown recently. You know, he's coming across like he's not too happy with Orton being part of the family. Could he cost them at all? Uh, I think there's always an option. I mean, uh, it was quite interesting to see the way that uh, Orton and Wyatt looked at each other on Tuesday night. If you watched uh, back on SmackDown at the very end of the match, Wyatt was in the middle of the ring doing his obligatory celebration. And... Orton and Har Harper were, were staring at each other. And I found that really interesting, actually. So, yeah, that's always an option. It's always a possibility. But um, I think it. I think for now, I, I don't think TLC... I don't know, but I don't think TLC is a big enough uh, occasion for something like that to happen. Something like, you know, the Wyatt family's been, what, around for three or four years now, maybe, you know. So uh, I think a, a general split of the Wyatt family would have to be more um, on a big, bit more of a bigger stage... Uh, for the full effect to be felt and I'm not sure TLC does that so we'll have to wait and see Harper maybe maybe but we'll have to wait and see tricky so there's only five matches on the card right now do you expect any more to be added what do you think could be involved um, I don't know don't know what we expect um, I think it would be nice to see uh, obviously an appearance from Shane and Daniel Bryan they were, obviously weren't on Smackdown that I remember particularly Shane wasn't I know that Shane's probably still recovering from his Survivor Series match where he took that hit from Roman Reigns but um, <clears throat> in regards to matches it's quite hard to tell I mean American Alpha I mean it wouldn't surprise me if we saw someone like American Alpha have a match against somebody because they're very very talented and you know, I think if, if they were up against anyone else other than Orton and Wyatt on Tuesday night, then I don't think they would have, um, you know, they, they would have been competing for the titles, uh, the tag titles this weekend. But because it was Orton and Wyatt, um, they just had to win. It just made logical sense. So American Alpha, I wouldn't be surprised if they were in a match, even if it was on the pre-show or something. Uh, don't know who against. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully Breezango. I'm a big fan of them too. <laughs> the old-fashioned police there. Yeah, I wonder whether we might see some of the cruiserweights now. We've had the launch of uh, 205 Live with Rich Swan, the new yeah. cruiserweight champion. What have you made of the, the, cruiserweight, the cruiserweight division since it's moved to Raw, now doing 205 Live? Has it been utilised well enough for you? Um, I think they've given the title they, they've given the title to the right person um, I don't think TJ Perkins was the right person I don't really see what he's added to the cruiserweight division but I think they gave it to Brian Kendrick after which was the logical choice don't really know where they're going with it with Rich Swan. I mean obviously he's trying to set up an interesting feud between him and Kendrick um, hopefully that will pique a bit more interest in the cruiserweight division I, you know, I, I don't think they um they, they, their two first choices from the actual Cruiserweight Classic didn't sign contracts with the WWE. One of them was Zack Sabre Jr., who's the uh, the young British lad who's really, really talented. Um, so they didn't sign contracts. I think it was uh, Sabre Jr. maybe who was meant to get the Cruiserweight title, but they had to give it to Perkins because say, uh, Zack Sabre didn't sign a title, uh, didn't sign a contract, sorry. So interesting, we'll see. I'm intrigued by it's where it's going. Rich Swan's got the crowd behind him, so it makes sense to give him the title now and create a feud with Kendrick and a bit more, a bit peak, a bit more interest in the cruiserweight division. Yeah. Well, it's been great to get your thoughts this morning, Gareth. Just before you go, why don't you tell our viewers how they can continue to 
get all of your insightful wrestling knowledge on social media, please. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter, uh, G underscore messenger. Uh, watch me on, uh, follow me on there, and I'll, I'm tweeting loads. I'm usually tweeting uh, some stuff about AJ Styles. He's my favourite, so he's the man. Face that runs the place. Face that runs the place. The phenomenal AJ Styles. Well, it's been phenomenal to talk to you, Gareth. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. Thanks for being on Sportachino. It's been a pleasure, Richard. Take care of yourself, mate. Great to speak to Gareth there about WWE TLC. Let us know your predictions on the Facebook comments page and on the YouTube page. We would love to hear from you and we will review it next Tuesday on Sportachino. Okay, it's that time of the day. It's time for our sports, health and fitness product review. You may remember that one of my favorite products that I've reviewed is the Nans Gluten-Free Porridge. So we're going to Nans once again. They are Nans Snackers Sea Salt and Balsamic Vinegar. That really is a rubbish picture I took, isn't it? You can't even see it, that is rubbish. Anyway, I'll show you them here as well. There it is on the screen. Snackers, sea salt and balsam balsamic vinegar, bite-sized crispy snacks, 100 calories per bag, whole grain oats, baked, not fried, wheat-free recipe, not gluten-free, not gluten-free. I'll be honest, I've eaten so bad it actually doesn't matter this week. I've eaten pizza, curry, oh, nonsense. I'm gonna have to hit the gym hard this weekend. No artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives, high fiber, no hydrogenated fats, suitable for vegans, no GM ingredients. Ingredients include whole grain oats, ah, oh, bad if you're gluten free, you need to be a celiac. Sunflower oil, sea salt, and balsamic seasoning. Uh, balsamic vinegar powder, yeast extract, sugar, acidity regulator, sodium, Oh, I can't even read this one. Deacetate and lots of other things. Garlic, onion, white pepper, maize starch. There's a lot here. Nutritional information, 1.6 grams of protein. Uh, yeah, per bag, 100 calories. So, hmm. It says, all right, snackers. I like my sea salt. I like my balsamic vinegar. They're pretty smart. Look, they're quite, they're quite cute, really. But are they tasty? Not really. They're a bit like, they're a bit like mini cheddars. They almost have a Subway type smell to them. They're a bit like mini cheddars. I prefer my sea salt and balsamic vinegar to be a little bit more pungent, to be a little bit stronger. These are too much like um, mini cheddars without that real kick. You can taste a bit of the balsamic vinegar, you can taste a little bit of the sea salt, but it's not enough for me. Um, and if they're not even gluten free, I don't really see what the point is. Um, which is a shame because I'm a massive fan of Nen's gluten free porridge, but unfortunately, these are just a little bit disappointing. Why don't you have a look yourself at what you think of them? Let us know. Send us an email, sportsdesk at sportachino.com. Send us a message on Twitter. We've got a link below going straight to our Amazon Associates account. If you buy from Amazon through that link, you're also helping our show. Try them out. Snackers, sea salt, and balsamic vinegar. Let us know what you think. All right, we've nearly reached the end of this fun-packed Sportachino show. Let's have a quick reminder of today's sports headlines. Gareth Southgate is appointed the new manager of the England national team on a four-year contract. Southampton knocked Arsenal out of the EFL Cup at the Emirates with a 2-0 win in the quarterfinals. Manchester United are also through with a 4-1 win against West Ham. It's been announced that bonus points will be used in next year's Rugby Six Nations. David Hay throws a punch at Tony Bellew at their free fight press conference.
So that's it. We've reached the end of another Sport of Chino. We're live every single weekday morning. And there are the snackers in my throat. This happens every single day. I need to stop eating. Anyway, it is, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. We should be live on Periscope. We had a few more problems with that today. We will be working on it. Hopefully, we'll be live on Periscope tomorrow on Sport of Chino. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Please get involved in the conversation. If you like this show, please share it, like it, comment it, get involved. Tomorrow we're going to look ahead to another huge weekend in the English Premier League. Also look ahead to the rugby between England and Australia. Big show on tomorrow. Don't miss it. HGMT, Facebook and on YouTube. Thanks for joining us today. I've been Richard Parr. You've been watching Sportachino. See you tomorrow morning from 8.